Welcome to Structured Installment Sales for Capital Gains Tax Efficiency. Today's case study number two is another one based on an actual inquiry I received earlier this week. And I'm going to take you through the steps we go through to help clients evaluate this method of selling a qualifying appreciated asset, usually a business or a piece of real estate or sometimes both. I am, by the way, your host, Dan Finn, and I placed my first structured installment sale in 2005, a tidbit I offer to reassure our viewers that I've been at this for more than a little while. Quick caveat that this is not tax, legal, or accounting advice. You may cut your finger and I may suggest that you put Bactine and a Band-Aid on it. It does not make me a doctor and does not constitute medical advice. Same thing here. I might know, might be imparting uh, information that is helpful, but it's not technically tax advice. Okay, the assumptions on this case are as follows. The business is being sold for $2 million. It's already fully appreciated. This is a couple that owns it. They file their taxes married filing jointly. It's in California, which is a high capital gains tax state. They have other income outside of what they'll receive from this transaction of about $100,000. And this qualifies for section 453 tax treatment, the installment method of accounting. Quick look at the capital gains rates that are new for 2022. Just a reminder that if you do sell an, an asset that qualifies for the installment method and you your uh, gain is only $83,350, you don't have to pay any federal taxes on that. Once you get past that level, it jumps up to 15%. This is for the married filing uh, jointly, which is the bottom box, by the way. Once you get past 83,350, jumps up to 15% until you get past 100, 517,200, at which point it converts to 20,000. Anything above that is 20. In, in, in addition to any um, uh, state tax that might be assessed on top of this. Beyond this, there's also a 3.8% net investment income tax that is paid once your modified adjusted gross income exceeds certain thresholds, in their case, $250,000. So I'm going to look at this two ways. Option one is what happens if they just sell it for cash? Traditional closing, selling the business, $2 million, escrow, bingo, it's done. Or what happens instead? This particular individual wanted to know what would happen if they just spread this out over a few short years, maybe the minimum amount of time possible to offset some of the taxes they might otherwise have to pay. So what we looked at, <clears throat> we decided to put it on a five-year basis. So we're going to pay Instead of $2 million all at once, $400,000 a year for five years. So he gets the same $2 million. And for this particular example, we're going to assume that uh, this analysis, there is no interest earned along the way. In reality, there is some. It's not going to be a lot over a, such a short period of time. But um, there would be some interest that would also apply here. So let's look at it the first way. What happens if they sell it for cash? They have this big $2 million pie of which about one third of it, that's the light aqua colored portion on the left, is gonna be out the door to the federal and state uh, tax authorities for about $680,000. That leaves them a hefty profit of $1.32 million approximately. But the $680,000 out the door is kind of a hard pill to swallow. By the way, I use uh, the online available um, calculator for to determine this on smartasset.com. There are few, several of them. I like this one because it's easy and simple to use. I think uh, I suggest if you have a, a business, you might want to try it as well. So what if instead of having the one-time $2 million, what if we spread it out over five years? We give them $400,000 each year for five years. The first thing you'll notice is the left, the capital gains tax piece, the slice of the pie that's capital gains is smaller. Instead of being one-third, it's about 25%. So that reduces their capital gains 
at the same time increases their net proceeds. The difference here, about $155,000 that you don't pay in capital gains, now goes into uh, the pockets of the uh, sellers. A couple quick reminders here that uh, this um, transaction does not include tax any tax deferred interest which would enhance the number sum particularly if it was a longer period if you had a longer period of time or lower anticipated future income these savings would even be more dramatic and uh, worth mentioning is that a structured installment sale is not a monetized installment sale. If you Google, Google, Google monetized installment sale, you'll find that the IRS is not looking favorably on those. And this is worth mentioning because I had a case that was on the two yard line just about to close and somebody at the last minute brought this up that they thought we were doing a monetized installment sale. It was not, it's obviously not, it's a structured installment sale which complies with all sections of the federal tax code. But because of that, the individual backed out and cost this seller a significant amount of money. One last crucial uh, bit of advice, you have to have the buyer involved in this uh, before both buyer and seller have to be engaged in this process. So it's best to make sure that you broach this subject with them in advance of executing any sales agreements. And that's about it. For additional information, if you haven't already, go to our YouTube channel and check out the Structured Installment Sales webinar. It's about 34 minutes long. It gets into all the nuts and bolts of how this thing works. And also there was an article I wrote not long ago that's featured in the CPA journal, journal that gives a little bit of a history about this particular topic. And that's it. If you like what you saw, hit the thumbs up button. Anything we can do to help answer any questions or give any assistance to you, please give us a call. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of your day.